How's it going, everybody? It's Dr. Weefer. I'm doing the lab review about the AP Bio Photosynthesis Lab. Yep, you know the one. The one where you take the leaf discs from the spinach leaves and we watch the leaves float. I'm going to be going how to set up the lab. I'm going to be going over the sample data for you guys. And I'm going to be talking about some possible uh, lab setups and questions that may be asked. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about spinach. Normally spinach grows in the ground. It is going to take light from the sun or some kind of light source and carbon dioxide is going to come in through the bottom of the leaves to help promote photosynthesis. However, we are going to be looking at spinach leaves by cutting discs out of the leaves. So what's going to happen is the spinach leaves are going to be nice and fresh and we are going to take nice sharp hole punchers and we are going to ticket punch all over the leaf until we get a variety of leaf discs. Now these leaf discs, we want a whole bunch of them because we want to set up different experimental groups with our leaf discs. So let's talk about the side view of a leaf. So if this is the top of the leaf right here, and this is the bottom of the leaf right here, and we're looking at it from the side, this is what we would see under the microscope. You would have a waxy layer on top, you would have a epidermis layer, and this right here, these cells that are tightly packed that go up and down, this is the palisade layer, they're tightly packed for photosynthesis, and what we want to talk about really is down here. We have a layer of cells called the spongy mesophyll. The spongy mesophyll is called spongy because, like any sponge you could imagine, Imagine it has a lot of air spaces in it, and that's where gas builds up. How does the gas get in there? Well, carbon dioxide is going to come through the stomate in the bottom of the leaf and build up in spongy mesophyll. It could move around into the plant cells, the little green dots inside the plant cells or the chloroplasts. That's what's going to be doing the photosynthesis. And as oxygen is being produced, it fills the gas chambers and it's going to come out through the stomate. By the way, these are the guard cells that can open and close the passageway for the gas exchange. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our leaf discs not in the uh, atmosphere, but we are going to submerge them in liquid. And the trouble is, is that when we look at an aquatic plant like this one right here, it is adapted for the low concentration of carbon dioxide that's already dissolved in the liquid. But what we want to do is we want to give our spinach plants a higher concentration of a carbon dioxide source. So that's where sodium bicarbonate comes in. So if we take a solution of sodium bicarbonate and we uh, put our leaf discs, discs in that, what's going to happen is the sodium bicarbonate is going to create a uh, carbonate ion, which is going to be the carbon source. It's like liquid CO2 that is going to be utilized by the spinach leaf discs when they undergo photosynthesis. So what we're going to do is we are going to put the leaf discs in a syringe, of course, without the needle, and we are going to use this to create a negative air pressure. We're going to put our uh, finger on top of it, and what's going to happen is when you pull through uh, the air, it's going to create the negative pressure, and it's going to actually take the gas that was trapped inside the stomates and when uh, inside the spongy mesophyll, excuse me. And what's going to happen is the discs that were floating actually are now sinking. So if we see in this diagram right here, or this picture, the leaf discs are floating because they have gas trapped in the spongy mesophyll. After we take them, they are going to actually sink to the bottom. So what's going to happen is that gas, carbon dioxide and oxygen and anything else that's in there, any other gas is taken out. You could think of a float. What's going to happen is when it fills with air, it floats on the pool and when you deflate it, it's slowly going to sink. So what's going to happen is as photosynthesis happens, oxygen is going to build back up and it's going to cause these leaf discs to float again. So the more the leaf discs float, because of the oxygen, we can conclude that the more photosynthesis is going on. By the way, to help trap the oxygen in here, in our experiment, we're going to have just a little dab of soap to help trap the oxygen in. However, uh, it will work without the soap. It just works better with the soap. So here's an example of a setup. Here's uh, 10 leaf discs and two uh, little cups. We have one covered in foil, one we're going to leave open in the air. I, it's a little dark because I have it. Uh, the light shut off in the room because I only want the plant cells to receive this light source that I'm giving it. So the idea is that in the tin foil, it's not receiving any light. 
and we can wait some time. So after, for example, zero minutes, no one's floating. After five minutes, we are going to record that two disks are floating. We can count them. One, two are in floating that were exposed to the light. And we uncover the one in the dark, and we peek in, and we see no one's floating. So cover it back up, put it back to the light source, wait another five minutes, and wow, what happens? Now we have three disks floating. You can count them. One two, three, and in the dark, there's still none. We peeked in, we don't see anything floating. We record that in our data table. And then what's gonna happen is after 15 minutes, we have five disks floating. Okay, so we can actually scatter plot this. What we can do is if we decided to look at this at peak in every minute, we, we could do is we could record how many disks are floating. But the trouble is it, you may be here for a long time to get all 10. So right here, we only got up to seven disks floating in this experiment uh, after 15 minutes. is a separate experiment, but the same idea. So what's going to happen is that how are you going to, what are you going to wait around for all 10? Maybe you damage the leaf disk and it's never going to float. So what's going to happen is a really good estimate for how well photosynthesis is doing is you can actually look at the rate of how long it takes for half of the disks to float. So if we had 10 disks, the half mark would be 5. So what's going to happen is we are going to call this the ET50. In other words, it's the estimated time for 50% of the leaf disks to float, okay? And what's going to happen is now we can set up an experiment. We can, it, Now the rate of photosynthesis is represented by ET50. We can set up an experiment like light intensity. So we have different, either different light bulbs or distances from the light source are going to give different intensities. So you can see as you increase the light intensity, the time that it took for 50% of the leaf disks to float actually goes down. So because it got quicker, that means photosynthesis was happening at a faster rate. But when you look at this, it may at the first glance of the eye look like photosynthesis is going down. But I just ex we just ex talked about how it's the time at which the leaf ticks float. So if you want to look a little bit more appealing, you could just take one divided by the ET50. If you take one divided by the ET50, it inverses the the uh, relationship, and what's going to happen is you're going to see that now this clearly goes up. So you could say, aha, as you increase the light intensity, photosynthesis goes up. It's a lot more pleasing to the eye when you do one over the ET50. So what kind of experiments can you do with this? You can change the light intensity, like I just showed you. You could change the light color. For example, the photosystems inside the chloroplasts the thylakoids and the chloroplasts are going to be absorbing different wavelengths of light. They're going to be absorbing the reds and the blues and reflecting the greens. So you can see that in an experiment. That's a pretty cool one to do. You can change the temperature, pH, concentration of bicarbonate ions, or even the type of leaf.